stage. Uh, we're growing as a team. We're going to have growing pains throughout the season. Um, people are going to grow up. And I think just overall, just we're doing that as a team. We're just sticking to the, the plan, sticking to our daily habits at the end of the day, trying to be disruptive. Um, I think that was the biggest thing today that we didn't do at Lawrence. We were much more disruptive. Um, I mean, right after the buzzer sound, you know, we went back in the locker room, we kind of put it behind us then. There's nothing you can do or change. Um, everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, and I just think that today we came out and played desperate. And, you know, we were the more desperate team, and we need to win this game. So we're just going to try to continue on doing that, playing desperate each and every night. Taylor, look at your statistical markers. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of those stats are you most most um, most proud of? Uh, I'd say probably the ten assists, just because I feel like that's really my main job with our team, just to command the ball, uh, get plays for for my teammates. And I feel like I did a good job of that tonight. Uh, and there's always ways to improve on it. Jared, what are your thoughts on what your buddy did? Um, you guys had asked me earlier yeah. in the week. Um, about Taven, and I'm going to say the same thing. Um, the same expression that he has on his face right now is the same expression you see throughout the game. Stone cold. Um, he's no longer a freshman, like I said, and I stand by that. Um, the second half of the season, he played in a big enough big enough big games. Um, and I'm just truly proud of him, um, seeing his growth from the moment I met him um, and seeing how he's uh, grown as a person and uh, he's grown. As a basketball player, I mean, what can you say, hometown hero? I mean, he's been here his whole life growing up, wanting to be a cyclone, and, you know, he's doing it in the, the biggest way possible. Um, he had big shoes to fill. He had to grow up fast, and he's done that. And, you know, there's still going to be growing pains, but I know him and I know his work ethic, and he's going to get through every single obstacle and moment that is in front of him. Uh, you guys are perfect at home. Kind of, what has the atmosphere done to kind of push you over the edge to get a win? Yes, I just think it's really difficult for uh, the opposing teams to come and play in Hilton. Uh, the fans do a great job of getting behind us, and that gives us an edge uh, from, from the very first play. Uh, we take advantage of, of the crowd and the energy that they bring, uh, and it gives us more energy, and we're able to play uh, freely and confidently. Jaron, what changed for you in the second? Uh, I went in the locker room and I threw up. <laughs> yeah, that's Are you serious? It's <laughs> serious. Um, I kind of went in the locker room and um, I was feeling a little nauseous. So, you know, I've, I've been dealing with some, some sickness over the past week and a half or so, and today it was more so stomach. And, um, I just felt better after I threw up. You're going to start doing that every game now? Or? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not sick every week, so hopefully I won't need to do that. But I'll say that in itself helped for sure. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I've been in situations like that, not scoring in the first half, not having a strong start. Um, I just trust the work that I put in and knowing that those shots are going to fall because, you know, I put in the work and uh, I'm going to reap those benefits. And, you know, James is going to keep passing me the ball, so he's going to keep trying to get up assists. <laughs> right, 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 right. Damon, since Jaron was asked to talk about you, how would you describe what he did in the second half? Because four for four and three is what seemed to come at key times when maybe you weren't going to extend the lead, but he was able to hit those big shots. Yeah, having having a player like Jaron on our team, a uh, leader, uh, he brings all the guys together and he really starts that connectedness uh, in our team. Uh, I know going into the season, I was looking up to him and Gabe and the older players uh, just looking for, for advice and just because knowing that they have experience, they know how to handle situations. Uh, so he's been a great mentor to me this season. And I know we trust each other with the same amount. So I know that I'm going to hit him and he's going to hit the shots and he knows that I'm looking for him. So we just have that, that great uh, connectedness. What did you feel Jazz brought to the table for you guys today? And then when he's out there, how, much, how does that change what you guys I mean, not change what you do offensively, but change how you do what you do offensively with what he brings as far as the pace that he plays with offensively. I mean, I mean obviously, uh, this is Jazz's first game back, but um, 
he's been busting his tail um, throughout practice. You know, uh, he's been on sideline hurt. He's been running, running the stairs, running Hilton, uh, running around, doing lines, sprints, you know, so that he can be in shape. Um, but he ultimately adds a different look. He's a bigger, bigger guard, in my opinion, that can handle the ball, make great decisions, and he can knock down the three. So it's, it's easy for him to space the floor. He can pick and pop. And he's, he's, not, he's not a selfish player at all. He cares about winning, regardless of him starting or coming off the bench or playing five to 10 minutes. It doesn't matter to him. He just, want to be, he just wants to be a part of something good. Uh, Jeremy Tatum, um, you know, the 53 points, 20 turnovers. What was the message or game plan defensively? I think just to, to be the aggressor the whole game. Um, the first time we played him, we were sort of back on our heels at, at moments in that game. So you know, we just came out desperate, like Jay said earlier, uh, to win the game and just, just be a, the aggressor on every possession, uh, put them on their heels and make it hard for them to score, um, make them take tough shots, and then uh, block out and get the rebounds. Coach Self talked about how he felt like you guys got 80% in the 50-50 balls. You take, how do you take pride in that? Um, when we look at 50-50 balls, um, they're 90-10, in my opinion, especially Karen Hilton. Um, <clears throat> I think it was one possession where color had went to the floor um, before we did. Um, I think they hit a, a shot after that, um, but it was a 50-50 ball, and we pride ourselves on, on getting those and them being 90-10. You know, Coach TJ came back in the huddle, and he kind of banged his fist, and he was like, that doesn't happen. You know, and when we're in Hilton, then, <clears throat> Those, that ball's on the ground, you know, it's 90-10 us. So we just believe that in every moment. I mean, you think about it, um, in those little plays, Taman, Caleb missed the layup. I mean, that's a 50-50 ball right there. Taman comes up with it, 90-10, in our opinion. So Taman is doing a great job of getting those 50-50 balls as a cleanup guy. <laughs> so just keep racking them up. Thanks, guys.